Hello, I'm Jiggle Buttersby and today I'm doing my features of the Pebble smartwatch by Pebble. This is a watch that came out a long time ago. By that I mean about two years. It was first released by a Kickstarter kind of program in back in 2013. Kickstarter is basically where you just put money towards a product or an idea which then gets formed into a product which at the end of the day you get once it's been created which takes a long time. A lot of users put a lot of money into this Pebble and it was eventually made. They all got this Pebble smartwatch which didn't have that many apps for it and then most of them sold them on to, on eBay about a year later. This is going to be my top features of the Pebble and the main one is that it's waterproof which you will probably not see as a big deal but coming from a home where the only one waterproof electrical product is Sphero it's quite weird to see something as practical as a watch to be waterproof. Yeah, you can get watches nowadays that are about 5 metres deep, I have seen a few that have go higher than that for about under £100. Now you get an electronic watch, a smart watch, which is also £100, but not only it's 50 metres deep in water. So I could go kayaking maybe on my kayak with my phone on top of the water, dive in for a bit of a swim maybe, and still get notifications, an email, Facebook, Twitter, message, studio, anything like that. I can get a text down there, a phone call, and I can either ignore or accept from the watch 30 metres into the water, which is sick. When I come in from a bike ride, I'm covered in dirt, you know, on my bike. I can, not only have I been measuring how fast I was going, where I went on the watch, I can also come in straight away, get washed. Don't have to take, about, don't have to take the watch off, and I can still get text while I'm in the shower or washing my hands or something. You may have to take it off every two days just because of that one spot where you haven't washed in two days because your watch is covering it but most of the water will get there anyway so it's not that big of a deal. Charging hasn't exactly lasted me a week, I did say it was over a week but I have been charging every three days and it only takes like three hours to charge I think, I haven't recorded it so it's not that big of a deal but I can just one night a week I'll just won't char I won't wear it to sleep and I'll just charge it. That comes on to like one of the fifth features, I don't know how many features I've just said but in this video you can expect me to just revel on for ages. I like how it records my sleep. Basically I have some really weird sleeping patterns. I have a sleep for ages or like literally two hours. That's that's it. So when it comes down to school days, I normally sleep for about eight hours, which is kind of long for me. I would say it's long. I don't normally sleep that long. And yeah, it's either that or about two hours, three hours sleep. So that's quite good to see on a watch, it can record how long I sleep, what time I actually went to sleep and when time I wake up. I like how you can sync it with your iPhone afterwards, to then add to a bigger app, which I'll talk about in another video. I like how with jailbreak on the iPhone you can actually reply to texts from the watch. Now these have to be custom made what custom made texts or just something you can type on the watch, which is very hard to type. So if you are a developer of Pebble, please work on a better way to type on the watch. So with these custom texts, normally if you look at my chats on text, which I won't be showing you, unless it's with someone deep conversation, I only send probably common texts like KK, seen a bit, bye, hello, uh, love you, <laughs> that kind of thing. Come out, I'll meet you at a shop or something like that. So my custom texts are very easy to configure. I just need to put KK, hi, hello, bye, that kind of thing. And I'm pretty much set until I have a proper full-on either argument or deep conversation with someone, which only happens with about one person every few weeks. So it's not a big of a deal. So when my phone is upstairs, which is in here, charging, I can be downstairs doing whatever I do, having my tea, get a text from my mate saying you're coming out, and I'll say I'll be out in about 10 minutes. I do say that quite a bit, so I will have that already preloaded into the watch. We just do one, two, send. And it won't interrupt my meal, I can still get back to it nice and quickly, which is a lot faster than getting my phone in my pocket, seeing who it's from, swiping across, then typing the actual text itself, which takes a lot more time and looks a bit more rude to my family, so that's good to see. I like the music feature, how you can play songs from your watch or skip, rewind, that sort of thing, which I find a lot more fun because on my bike I listen to songs on the way to school, and with the headset, I know there's a trick where you can press it three times or something to go rewind it, but it's quite hard to be doing, you know, 30 kilometers an hour than being able to have one hand off pressing three buttons, whereas I can go straight across, back, one, like, it takes like one second to do it on my watch, which means when I'm going at 30 kilometers an hour, it's not big, big of a deal, I won't fall off or anything like that. Whereas if I'm messing about with the headphones, going like that, it's quite, it's quite hard to do. You should probably try it if you don't believe me. 
So I like how it's a lot easier than using the double press thing on the watch. Headset. Headphone thing. Yeah. Also, if you have Jailbreak, you can add Activator actions to it. Now, Activator, if you don't know what Jailbreak is, is where you can configure certain buttons or certain taps or certain touchscreen methods to open up certain apps or turn certain settings on. For example, on my watch, I have the down arrow as volume down, the up arrow as volume up, which is a lot easier than going onto the headphones or opening up my phone swiping across for volume up. Also, I have it as the centre thing to lock the screen. So if my phone's upstairs and I know someone's going to be up there going on it, I can lock the screen from downstairs, they'll be all confused and they won't be able to get on it. Also, a great feature of the iPhone app, Pebble Cam, is where you can see your iPhone camera from anywhere. Well, within the thing, it's 30 meter range of the watch and the phone, I can see what my camera is seeing from a distance, basically. So if I've had my phone at my door while I'm sat here, it has like a CCTV camera. I can see who's coming up the stairs or when they're coming into my room. I can see on my watch and stop whatever I'm doing uh, or switch to a different program. Or say if I'm pretending to do homework where I'm trying to watch, I don't know, MKBHD's recent video, I can just switch across nice and easy. There is another section of the watch that I haven't really got into that much, which is gaming. And it's not anything like a 8GB RAM kind of thing. But this is this app called Tiny Bird, which is like Floppy Birds for the watch. And so when I'm on the toilet, I'm going to get a bit bored. It's quite good to just switch on, go on Floppy Birds for a bit. <laughs> which is also handy in class at school, because no one, you're not allowed phones in my school. So if your phone's in your bag or in your pocket or stuff like that, if you're there tapping away at Floppy Birds, you'll get in trouble. Whereas if I'm just messing about with my watch, yeah, mess, I'm just setting alarm, it's not a big deal. I could actually be playing Floppy Birds. Yeah. <laughs> So it's, I like the watch for doing that kind of thing, getting away with stuff you wouldn't normally get away with, which is the main reason I bought it in the end of the day. I can still reply to text, receive text without getting my phone out in class, which is a big deal to me, kind of. I like how it does all this tracking your activity, so as soon as I start running, it's set up to a certain app so it can start charging, not charging, but recording how far I run or how fast I'm running, which is good to see. I also like when I'm riding my bike. I'm on a BMX, so I don't exactly have all these little devices connected to it because I do bunny hops and all that kind of thing all the time. So I don't have time to be connecting little watches and computers to my bike. I can just have it on my wrist, see how fast I'm going, nice and easy. I am going to go through like the things I have on my watch, like what apps, so here we go. So you get the stock music app. Very good. You can get newer ones where you can change the volume and change the actual song is in pick which song you want from the app stores and that. Then you have notifications which tells you all your notifications, you know, text from people or snapchats or whatever. It links up to every app on your phone and tells you notifications. You've got alarms which are quite good, you can set them to vibrate which is a lot easier than making a sound. So you might, you might not even be able to hear your sound if it's in your bag or upstairs, but I can feel the vibrate on my arm which is good. Then we have watch faces, I have quite a few watch faces which I'll go through. Settings, which if you just go there, it's not exactly anything special, it's just basic stuff. Then we have Misfit. Misfit is like the fitness app that I use. It can tell me, you know, how many steps I've done, which is a great feature as well, step counter. It tells you the time, and then it even does average sleep, you know, it does a good graph of how long you've been sleeping. Weekly activity, all that kind of thing, I like that about it. Multi-timer, that's a separate app, which is just like a stopwatch and a timer, which I find very useful when doing, you know, hot chocolate or something like that. Smartwatch Plus, which is the uh, entire jailbreak app, that's got a lot of things within it, like maps, GPS, uh, location, weather, it's got all that decent thing I'll talk about. Tiny Bird, which is that Floppy Bird yoke, which is like an app full of jokes, so if I'm a bit short of uh, something to do, I can just go on that and just get a few jokes. Pebble Paddler, that is something for my kayak, so when I go like that for a stroke of the kayak, that counts as strokes. I've done 566 strokes either day when I was on my kayak. And then finally directions, that's just Google Maps for the watch. Anyway, thank you for watching, uh, I can go on about this watch for ages, it's such a good watch. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one, bye.